guys, welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Diaries. My name is Matt Lang and we're here at Death and Taxes talking about Nika Single Malt Yoshi No H Statement or NAS. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about this whiskey in particular because this is a basically key point in the whiskey industry uh, in which we've got to look, look back and we're like what happened. The reason why, and we'll go through that in a second, is the noise statement was a, a thing that happened in Japan. In the reason why Nika started releasing the noise statement was a thing that happened in Japan around the 2014. But before we got into that, let's talk about uh, Masataka Taketsuru. This is the gentleman who started the distillery in, in 1934. Before that, he did a stint uh, apprenticeship in Scotland, work, uh, working for Hazelburn and Longmont. Uh, Hazelburn being in Campbelltown, that's where he finished his apprenticeship and married a young lady called Rita. And then both of them decided to move to Japan uh, and started a distillery in the town of Yoji, uh, basically the, pre the precinct of Hokkaido. Now, Yoshi itself is close to the ocean. It's in the south coast, uh, in the in uh, in the South Island on the west coast. Uh, it's really close to the ocean, so it has that maritime saltiness that it comes through it, and also that humidity that you can get from Scotland as well. Very green, very hilly, uh, and also very popular for the apples as well. So between for the first four or five years, they produce only apple brandy and apple cider. Eventually, they release the, fir the first single bottling in around the 1940s. In the 19, uh, 1960s, they started the distillery Miyayiku, and eventually they expanded that distillery as well in producing column distillation. We'll go that later on. Now, the, the Yoshi distillery has always been producing whiskey with a certain amount of pit in them. As an actual fact, they produce three types of barley, malted barley, non-pitted, medium pit, and highly pitted, and then they produce a blend. Now, the relationship between Rita and Taketsuru is actually quite important. The reason why is because Rita was basically like any great man, there's a great woman behind it, and she was the one who supported him all the way just to produce a, to create a distillery. As a matter of fact, Taketsuru wanted to stay in Scotland and Rita was the one that convinced him to go to Japan. This is uh, this is actually really important because the reason, it's, it's kind of like a little uh, starting point why uh, Nika had to start doing a uh, knowledge statement. The reason why is in 2014, uh, Japan released a little soap opera uh, that that is called Masan, and it's basically a 15 minute uh, soap opera that happens in the morning. Uh, and in this case in particular, they released it for one year long, and it was a relationship between Taketsuru and Rita and the love story. Now, this became really, really, really popular, so much so that the Yoshi distillery by 2015 had had a million visitors going through the distillery, and Nika distillery went through the roof. So. Basically, Japan just bought all the stock there was. Like Japanese was, they were smashing Yoshi and Miyayiku. So all the age statements basically disappeared. I'm talking about the 10, the 12, 15, uh, they did a 20, uh, 21, 25, 30 years old, and so on. If you can find the 15 year old for Yoshi, for instance, that goes for over a thousand dollars. The 30 year old for Yoshi goes for something ridiculous like six, seven thousand dollars. Just to give you an idea, that whiskey in itself, the Yoshi 15 in 2015, I remember buying it for $130. So it's basically impossible. So Nika had to make a decision in limit the amount of whiskey that they were releasing or create a non statement and try to make people enjoy the whiskey for what it, for the flavors that it has and not for the age now this is part uh, this was happening all around the world because in 2015 a lot of the distilleries that didn't think that there was going to be such a big whiskey uh, boom, they started running out of stock. So nowadays, like even my, let's just say Macallan, for instance, in 2015 and during that era, they released something that it was called the Siena, the Amber, and the Ruby. This was the first time that Macallan started releasing knowledge statements as well. The reason why, again, is because Macallan was running out of stock, and they were try, they were try, everybody was trying to educate the customer because they were thinking that they were going to run out of stock, they're trying to educate the customer that an age statement in a bottle doesn't necessarily mean that the whiskey is going to be a better whiskey. It is a very, very romantic thing and it's a very nice thing to say, oh, I'm drinking an 18-year-old, a 21-year-old, and thinking about all those years that the whiskey has been in the barrel. But at the same time, that doesn't guarantee you quality of flavor. So in 2015, all distilleries, it was kind of like a cost session correlation at the same time. 
They started releasing knowledge statements because they were running out of stock, but at the same time, they started releasing knowledge statements just to prove that they can produce whiskies that have as much flavor and they're just as good as the as counterparts with age statement. As a matter of fact, we did the reviews of the McCullens editions and edition number one, two, three, four, five. None of them has an age statement and none of them tells you what age statement, but like the edition number one now goes for 1500 bucks. And there's delicious whiskies. Anyway, going back to Nika, Nika Yoshi. So there are no age statement on this one. Uh, again, they, they don't sell what age, but it's between five to seven years. Bottle of 45% ABV, which is actually it's a really good ABV for me. Uh, the sweet spot for me for a good whiskey is between 45 to 47. Uh, it's not a 40% ABV whiskey has like it's a little bit more bland. A 45 has a little bit carries more the original flavors from the original distillate, and it's actually uh, like just carries a lot more flavor. Uh, it's a marriage between Yoshi always does American oak and sherry cask. The sherry cask in this one is a little bit lighter. It's more predominant American and oak for flavors uh, and the whiskey yeah the whiskey itself is actually quite light uh, like most Japanese whiskies as well but it's still really really complex this bottle sells online for about 100 and 130 uh, Australian dollars uh, which is quite reasonable for Japanese whiskies uh, compared compared to like a Yamasaki 12 year old that goes for like $300 at the moment so yeah, you can definitely tell this is a Yoichi. Has a slightly smoke, uh, slightly more complex aromas. Yeah, that's delicious. Uh, you still get like some fruitiness, apples and pears, uh, slightly green tea, but then the smokes come through. Uh, it actually gives, uh, and the sherry comes through, so it gives it a little bit more body and a little bit complexity. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening, uh, and we'll see you next time. Slanjaba.